This is the epicentre of Rolex UK, West Malling, Kent, England. Rolex feature amid the top 100 companies of prestige products in the world. And watches for men have a huge interest. And this has been proved by the internet watch forums, especially Rolex. I've been interested in wristwatches since I was 12 years old. I had a £1.50 black dial Timex with numbers 13 to 24 written on the inner dial. Then, when I was 16, I bought a Cami so-called diver's watch for £11.50, which featured a bezel, and you could also change it for a world timer bezel. But it was in 1973 when we saw the film Live and Let Die with James Bond wearing a Rolex Submariner that my eyes were finally open to the best watches in the world. He was wearing a Submariner non-date. I saved up as a London fireman in a well-paid job and when I was 19 I bought a Submariner date. The word Submariner date was written in red and that watch now which I paid £192 for, is now auctioning for over £10,000. For a mere £3 more in those days, you could buy a Rolex Sea Dweller. And I've been wearing a Submariner date for 40 years. <coughs> I've owned and sold all variations of the watch to the present ceramic incarnation. Now the resale value of a steel Rolex professional model is always going to guarantee a good return. So Rolex watches in steel are currency. And in 1993, I won a black dial two-tone Submariner date in the Rolex Awards for Enterprise in my efforts to locate Sir Francis Drake's coffin of lead. In 2004, I added the anniversary Submariner with the green bezel on the black dial. In 2005, I bought the Rolex white dial Explorer 2. And in 2007, for the first time also, I bought the GMT with its new look bezel. It was the first watch in the professional range to be adorned with a ceramic bezel. And in 2010, I bought the Deep Sea and the ceramic sub date. In 2012, I added the 42 mil Explorer 2 with a white dial. It was a very unusual looking watch. I don't like white dial watches, but I took the idea, it depends what's on the white dial. And I've worn that watch in many countries, I'll tell you in a minute. In 2014, I bought the blue and black bezel GMT. And this year, I now, for the first time, am wearing a Rolex Sea Dweller 4000. I've decided that instead of saving money in the bank with low returns on interest, it's best to have watches. My Rolex collection has accompanied me to around 80 countries on land and sea expeditions. I've worn a Samara date on a BBC Two in Drake's Wake television programme that I documented in 1996 and I dived 150 feet with it reaching the nearest point to Sir Francis Drake's coffin of lead on the seabed in Panama. The Submariner withstood a sandstorm in Mauritania. I wore it on a yacht in winter through the stormy straits of Magallan and the Explorer 2 has accompanied me to the deserts of Sudan and Chile I've also worn it on Easter Island and on a jungle trek in Panama. I've only been as far as Malta wearing the GMT because some of my journeys I get robbed and beaten up. And I lost a Rolex in Colombia and in Africa. I was strangled in Colombia and I was knifed in Africa. Basel World 2008, I was there where I saw the launch of the Deep Sea. I've been to many Rolex centres around the world, 22, and here they are. Bangkok, Beijing, Buenos Aires, Caracas, Geneva, Jakarta, Johannesburg, 
Kathmandu, London, Kent, Lisbon, Madrid, Manila, Mexico City, Milan, Mumbai, Muscat, Nairobi, New York, Sao Paulo, Shanghai, Toronto, and Valletta. I collect Rolex promotion material, such as the baseball cap and the pullover and pens, and calendars, umbrellas, and I've got a cuttings book that dates back to 1975, which has adverts of the very sought after Explorer 2. I don't have a balance collection, don't have a dress watch or a business watch such as the Cellini or the Datejust, but I've all got the variations of the Rolex Submariner. But there's no set rule for collecting. For example, instead of a balance collection, <coughs> one person's got about 80 variations of the diver watch range. It's taken me 40 years to collect six watches. One thing I like about the <coughs> Submariner type watch is they're versatile. You could wear a Submariner into the murky depths of the English Channel, and then you could wear that watch in a board meeting. And James Bond wore the Submariner for his wedding. So it's tough, yet elegant for all occasions. The only trouble is, when you have a big collection, each watch gets very limited wrist time. So there's a limit to the size of your collection, to the practicality of wearing the watches. And you end up not wearing your watch often enough. And you've got to get each watch serviced. About £500 to have it serviced, and you pay another £500 if you want the watch to have new dial and hands, which would be a logical step to take because you'd be reinforcing the strength of the luminosity. Then you've got to have storage fees if you keep the watch in the bank. And life is not long enough to get tired of wearing a Rolex. Now I'm now going off to Athens and to Milan to visit the other Rolex watch centres I'm yet to put on my list.